go for today. What day are we? Six, seven, fourteen? Day thirty-two. Six or seven. Um, the goal is to get some priming done on where we did any type of repairs or um, any type of filler, and then hopefully that'll go off pretty quick, and then we can come back and start painting. If we can get this side of the hole done before what two o'clock today when mm -hmm. it gets sunny. We'll have one. Uh, Carter, will you find the paper towels? Mm -hmm. That would be... Paint between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to Check. avoid dew condensation. Paint between 80 degrees and 90 degrees outside. No. That's not going to happen. It's like 98 degrees today. Um, cool uh, do not apply a product in high humidity or with weather threatening. Well, we got both of those going on today. No, you just do what you got to do, right? Well, we have to paint. We have to paint, so. So how was it? We got in a good rhythm. We did. It's not perfect, but... It looks so good. Yeah. And we'll come back and we'll sand um, tomorrow morning. We'll scuff it up. Scuff it up a little bit. And then anywhere that's like brush strokes, imperfections, bubbles, it'll take care of those. And then we'll do the second coat on there. I'm sorry. I'm going to say a bad word. She looks like a bad <laughs> <laughs> she looks so good. Dang. I love it. I absolutely love it. It looks good. It looks good. We just finished painting the first side of the boat. And it's half done. So there's the side we painted and not painted. Here's the dilemma that we face now. The shade is finally on the starboard side so we can finally start painting it. Problem is, is now there's a chance of rain coming in the next two hours. So do we start painting? Because the last couple days, this chance of rain, like it hasn't hit. One day it nailed us real bad. The other day there was nothing. Let's we'll see. So, oh, we there's prepped. a... We'll make the decision last week. Uh, what to do, what to do. All right, we're going for it. We're going. We're going to top. We all three got in a great rhythm of who did what project and who did what and who handed what brush to where and who. The weather today is going to be horrible, same as tomorrow, most likely. So we are not going to be able to paint at all. So we're doing some smaller stuff like uh, sanding all the props and fins and all the underwater stuff. As well as these parts that go with that. Of which I cleaned them. And now for the fun part. Wrong direction.
I can't believe I hate bugs. Look at this. Fresh painted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ugh. All right, stop at five thousand. We're gonna leave for now. We'll deal with it after it gets hard, and we'll see what we gotta do. Did the side do it? There's no bugs on the side, is there? Mm -mm. No, not that I see. Just the back. It's weird. Here we are, day seven hundred and thirty-five. Day twelve. Is it really day twelve? Yeah. I All right. In the car. And we're finally doing bottom paint. What we came here for. Oh, that in the, the hole. Yeah. See the hole, got two coats of paint on it. Looks really good. We're very happy with the way that turned out. Just gotta go remove our tape from up there and these guys paint. She's looking good, guys. Get it in my hair. So we painted the bottom one coat. We haven't done the waterline yet because we're waiting for the uh, top side paint to get harder before we put tape on it. But we're gonna paint running gear today with what is this stuff? Prop uh, coat. Prop coat. Prop coat by Pettit. Uh, we've done it every time we've hauled out. Chris does it on every boat he ever works on. It's great for the running gear. It keeps the barnacles off real well. And then one thing that we did do to prepare. What we do is we taped off where the zincs are so that they still have metal on metal contact. So uh, it will keep the electricity to flow onto it and eat the zincs. However, if you didn't tape it off, then the electricity would either be stuck on this because the paint would block it like an insulator. So you need to keep these areas nice and clear. Which is why you take them all off. Nice. Alright, let's get painting. So. Oh, this is actually like some heavy paint. Whee! Let's stop there. Paint. Mm. Alright, let's get our squishies. You're squishy. Me squishy. Your handle. My handle. Ready to paint. Looking good, buddy. Had to abandon your chair? Unfortunately. Got an entire side because of my chair. It's a very nice chair though. Very junky, but. So what did you call this for our boat? Uh, a spa day for it. For you or for the boat? For the boat. I thought you meant because you got a chair. No, a spa day for the boat. And a full week of it just being at the spa. Got there too. Uh, we just finished painting the prop gear. It was two hours, so fun. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all we did. So here's our new cutlass bearing. The rubber in here is not worn, and so it's a nice snug fit on the uh, on the shaft. And then we'll just slide it in. Perfect. How to put a cutlass bearing back in? <laughs> It's the opposite of the way we removed it, right? Yeah, you're. You just put it, flip the machine around, shove the cutlass bearing on instead of the pieces, and yeah. basically you just shove it back in just like this. So before we use this on this side to press it out, and this went inside of here and pressed the bearing out, and then now we don't need that. We're literally just using the same um, piece to just press it back in, mm -hmm. and you just try and make it even all the way up. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Oh, finally got our first cutlass bearing back in. It's not a fast process, but uh, we got her done. Took about an hour. Slow and steady, cranking it in. So now we'll take this off and we'll move over to the other side. Um, so I put the cutlass bearing in the cooler so it'll help contract the metal and then it uh, should make it a little easier to slip in and then as it warms up it'll stick in really Freezing cold. Push it in. Okay. It didn't go in. I know. I got this one. I just hurts my legs to bend yep. like that. So welcome to this week's edition of... Talking Under Our Aft. <laughs> Over the last few weeks, if you've been watching us, we're in a boatyard, and we've been behind the aft, on the aft, and now under the aft. Putting in our last cutlass bearing here. It's going to take me probably another half hour to an hour to get this done. Thought we'd chat with you while we're working. So this so bear bear with us with the noise. This week's video is all about painting. We did the haul out, why we're hauling out, and then we did the sanding, and now painting. So we <coughs> painted the bottom paint and the top side paint. So we'll start with the top side. Yeah. Um, we used a brand uh, Pettit, and it's called Easy Poxy. And I've been using it on the inside of the boat, so we had some experience on how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good paint. I've used okay. it on some other stuff. Um, it's not, it's probably the middle of the road as far as, um, yeah, yeah. it's it's not your high, high end, $600 a gallon, right. crazy top side. It, but it's for a do-it-yourselfer, for smaller projects or or stuff like that, It's it's been fine. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just went back to commercial boat that I used some of this product on what is it a year later year and a half later maybe even two years and I was like oh it looks the same as it did was when I painted it so uh, yeah. it's held up well there so uh, we think it'll hold up well go ahead. and hold up good on this as well we painted because our hull was to the point where it had a lot of damage and we fixed no, the damage didn't have a lot of I'm sorry it, it, had, it had a lot some of scrapes and scratches. yeah and it had some some chunks out of the gel coat yeah and so we had to repair the gel coat and yeah. a little bit of fiberglass yeah. and do some filler and it just was different colors right because it's not so i guess what i was going to say is uh, I, excuse me not a lot of uh, damage but it needed paint yeah so it, it had was, enough it was very oxidized where yeah. you could wax it and within a month you were getting the you wipe it your yeah. hand and your hand turned white again so there was just spots that needed repainting and if we had painted them white it never would have matched yeah. and then our bootstrap and all the yeah. blue trim was work gross and... was just peeling and you could tell they painted and then instead of then they just put a bigger stripe over the top and then a bigger stripe I think we had like three blue stripes I had yeah. to sand off and so they just kept getting like bigger and so we took them off and we actually uh, just went to a gray hull so it looks bougie so we've been pretty happy and we've been then, really uh, happy it looks really good so top coat's different because you gotta what you gotta sand it. However smooth you want your finish to come out, no matter what kind of paint you use, however smooth you want it to come out is about your prep work. So yeah. all that sanding, and if you've got a little dimple or a little scratch, you have to fill that and then you have to make it perfectly smooth. Otherwise, you're gonna see it through mm -hmm. the paint. Because it's shiny. It's not yeah, and, and it's thin. It's it's mm -hmm. the marine coatings are actually really thin, yeah. which is why you gotta do multiple coats. Um, but that's how they get the really shine, gloss, mm -hmm. smooth finish. So yeah. uh, the more prep work you put in, the more detail you are with that, the better your finish is going to come out. Yeah, it, we spent more time prepping than painting. Yeah. And then when we got to paint, we were so stoked. It was a week ago, actually, that we did our first coat of paint. And then the weather came. So we have been dodging Florida thunderstorms yeah. every afternoon. Like we... We plan our schedule, and then we have to look at weather. Even, like, as we set paint out, we're like, okay, before we open the paint, let's look at the weather and make sure. And there's been 
a couple days we're like, nope, we can't do yeah, it. We can't put it pay. back away. So the reason is, is it's very sensitive to heat and humidity. And we were painting in temperatures that were hotter than we probably should have. Of course. And way more humid than we should have. Of course. And so we had to paint in the shade. And as soon as we had direct sun, man, that paint would get go off so fast and we couldn't get a smooth finish. Yeah. And so it was tough. And um, this paint, you roll it on and then you got to tip it with a brush to pop the bubbles. And you have brushing thinner in so it flows out to get pretty smooth. But if you get too thin, then all the paint kind of sags. So and you, you get, have to find you get like drips. a happy medium. And if it's too thick, it goes off and you end up with these crazy deep brush strokes. So it is very, uh, it's not like painting a wall at the house no. versus the bottom paint. Super forgiving. Yeah. Paint it on. The bottom paint we painted in the sun. We painted. Well, it was mostly in shade because under the boat. Yeah. Um, but even like, I'm like, well, there's maybe a storm this afternoon. We can paint the bottom. Yeah. It's not going to ruin it. Versus the top side, we're like, shoot, it might rain in an hour or two. Yeah, you're supposed to give it so much time to dry, and then it still cures over like a couple weeks. So it might be dry, they call it tape dry for like an hour or two, so you can put tape on it. Mm -hmm. But then it gets hard and cures over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, if you want it to stay shiny, you got to keep it dry. So even if you paint too late in the day, and it gets dew, it doesn't rain, mm -hmm. but it gets dew overnight, you lose the shine. I didn't know that. Yeah, and so... We always painted in the morning, though. Yeah, we, we tried to. That. They usually say you shouldn't start painting... You shouldn't paint after 4 p.m. So if you start at 4, yeah. you're going to get due. You want to try and be done no later than 4. Which is fine because thunderstorms usually start at 3 or 4, so that was fine. Yeah. Um, one morning we got up at like 6 in the morning to do our second coat of paint. And we had to like clear our schedules because we had stuff going on. We're like, no, this is what the weather requires. So we, That was the day we could do it. And, then, uh, and when we got here, though, it was so dewy. We had to take all the tape off and re-tape. And we had to dry it. And we had to dry it. So anyway, it was a process, but we did it. We're glad it's done. Would you do it again? Yeah, I mean, if I had a boat that I... If we end up with another... If I was on a different boat, or if we bought a different boat in the future, I would do all this stuff, like, right away if I Agreed. could. Agreed. And then Agreed. I could enjoy it. Because uh, this is going to look really nice. And... Uh, We've been on the boat for four years and we haven't been able to enjoy it. So I would do it again, but um, I think what's hard right now is I would do it before we moved on it, if I did it again. It's yeah. hard because right now we're living in a hotel, so I'm paying for a hotel, a boat slip, and a haul out marina, and so I'm feeling rushed and then when the weather is bad you just sit in the hotel and feel like you're wasting your day yeah we've been pretty lucky we haven't had many maybe two days that were partial days we yeah. couldn't get too much yeah. done so we've done pretty good it's been two weeks we've busted our tails two weeks i think we're doing pretty good so uh but next week we will talk about the exact cost of everything in the boatyard we're also going to talk about what it would cost if you paid someone to do it yeah all of that um yeah. i'll get you know, and then after we did the top, we taped off and we painted a nice waterline today. And like I say, the bottom paint's just, you just roll it on after you've primed it. And but it's very, like it gets all over. So I can't use water to get it off because if water got the paint off, boats would be in trouble. She doesn't like those paper suits. She's done. I use those paper suits for sanding and they're just a sweat hot box and I'm done. I'm tired of it. So. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions, feel free to shoot them to us. Um, share this with your friends. And yeah, as always, enjoy the journey.